The live stream's now started, Chair. Good evening, colleagues. In the absence of the Mayor, as Deputy Mayor, I will be the person presiding over our council meeting today. Owing to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, the government guidance issued to stay at home, it has not been possible to hold meetings of the Borough Council in person. The Council has therefore made arrangements under the Coronavirus Act 2020 to hold this Council meeting virtually. It is these regulations that enable the Council to hold this meeting of Borough Council without any of us being physically present in the Council Chamber. This meeting of the Council will re remain accessible to the public as it's being streamed live on YouTube, which will be available for repeated viewings afterwards. Therefore, elected members, officers, and the wider public are able to follow the law and government guidance with regards to staying at home and protecting our NHS whilst ensuring decision-making and the democratic process continues. I'd like to remind members that the Council Code of Conduct still applies to virtual meetings and the same procedures undertaken in physical meetings still apply. For example, waiting for the chair to give permission to speak. I would ask members to please try to limit disturbances wherever possible. After the introductory roll call, all members and officers should please mute their microphones to reduce feedback and background noise, which will make the, the meeting easier to follow. Please ensure mobile phones and other electronic devices, TVs, tablets, and so on are on silent during the meeting. The strategy and democracy support officer will mute microphones as necessary if there's background noise in order to assist members. Members should indicate that they wish to speak by physically raising their hand or by using the raise, raise hand function and being invited to speak by the chair as usual. When members do speak, I would ask that they identify themselves for the benefit of any members of the public or press who are observing the meeting. Voting will be managed by the acting head of legal services and strategy and democracy officers who are minuting the meetings. If an item requires a vote, the acting head of legal services will read out the name of each member in turn in alphabetical order and ask them how they wish to vote. Each member will need to unmute their microphone before speaking. Once a member has given their vote, then microphones should be muted again. The acting head of legal services will record the outcome of the voting and announce it at the meeting. If an item does not appear to be contentious, I will ask members whether any member disagrees or wishes to abstain. In the situation where there is a dissenting voice, a vote will be taken. I now ask each member to confirm their attendance by undertaking a roll call and asking all participating members to please reply present. Can members please unmute their microphones now? Councillor Amar? Present. Councillor Anglin? Present. Councillor Atkinson? Present. Councillor Bell? Present. Councillor Boyack? Apologies. Councillor Councilor Brady? Present. Councillor Carter? Present. Councillor Dean? Present. As I said before, I have apologies for Councillor Dick. Councillor Dix? Present. Councillor Dixon? Present. Councillor Donaldson? I saw him earlier. He's on there. <laughs> Councillor Donaldson, can you unmute your microphone to say that you're present? I'll come back. Councillor Duncan? No. Councillor Ellison? Present. Councillor Donaldson, back on now. Okay, thank you. Councillor Flynn? Present. Councillor Foreman? Present. Councillor Francis? Present. Councillor Gibson? Yeah. Councillor Hamilton? Present. Councillor He? Present. Councillor Hetherington? Present. I have apologies for Councillor Keegan. Councillor Kilgower? Present. Councillor Leask? Present. And welcome back, Councillor Leask. Thank you. Councillor E. Markham? Apologies. Sorry. Councillor N. Maxwell? Present. Councillor N. E. Maxwell? Present. Councillor McCabe. Present. Councillor McHugh. Apologies, Madam Mayor. Councillor, Mil Councillor J. Milburn. <coughs> Present. Councillor P. Milburn. Present. 
Councillor Peacock? Present. I have apologies for Councillor Perry. Councillor Porthouse? Present. I have apologies for Councillor Proudlock. Councillor Punchon? Apologies. Councillor Purvis? Present. Councillor Roberts? Present. Councillor Robertson? Guilty. <laughs> Councillor Robertson? Guilty. He's here. Councillor Sewell? No. Councillor Smith? Present. Councillor Stevenson? No. Councillor Strike? Present. Councillor Taylor? Present. Councillor Thompson? Present. Councillor Trainer? Present. Councillor A. Walsh? Present. Councillor M. Walsh? Present. Councillor Welsh? Present. And I have apologies for Councillor West. Okay, that's all of the uh, notes taken and all the, the apologies taken. The first item of business is declarations of interest. We received notification of a number of declarations. Before I invite members to declare an interest, I have a declaration to announce myself. As the May, as a member of the Standards Committee, I need to declare an interest in the second agenda item and I will vacate the chair at that point. Councillor Hetherington, you have a, um, a de declaration of interest? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I ha also have a declaration in item three, as I'm a member of the Standards Committee. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Smith, you have a de declaration of interest? You're on mute, Councillor Smith. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, yes, I have to, uh, a non-pecuniary interest to declare in item three. Thank you. Are there any other declarations of interest? Yes, yes Chair. Madam, Madam, Mayor, Madam Deputy Mayor. I can hear Councillor Thompson. Councillor Thompson, yes, to declare an interest in agenda item three as a member of the Standards Committee. Okay. Anybody else? Yes, Chair. Councillor Robertson. Yes, uh, I was the victim of the kangaroo court and I've got a declaration of interest. Thank you, Councillor Robertson. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to verbally make a declaration before we move to the next business? Okay. If you have a disclosable pecuniary interest in any item which prevents you from participating in the debate and any voting, the strategy and democracy officer will place you in the waiting room during the discussion and decisions of that item. Once the item has been considered, the strategy and democracy officer will allow you back into the meeting. The next item of business is to consider a report of the head of the corporate and external affairs, which is the monitoring officer, on the appointment of an independent remuneration panel. I'll ask Councillor Dixon to formally move the report. Councillor Dixon. Order, chair. The order, please. A point of order. We haven't started the debate yet. What, what's, what's the point yeah. of order, Councillor Robertson? Well, that's what I'm asking for. Okay. Um, could I ask you, has uh, Councillor Ed Malcolm been arrested? Is that why he's not attending? I'm sorry, I'm not taking that as a point of order. Thank you. Okay. Councillor uh, Dixon? Yes, um, thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor. As colleagues may be aware, national legislation requires that local authorities must take into account the recommendations of an independent remuneration panel before making any changes to special responsibility allowances or related members' allowances. The term of office of the previously appointed independent remuneration panel has ended. Following a recruitment process overseen by the monitoring officer, we are now recommending three new candidates for appointment to the independent remuneration panel for the coming four year period. Ms. Samantha Teague, Ms. Jane Cuthbertson and Mr. Stephen Elliott. Between them, Ms. Teague, Ms. Cuthbertson and Mr. Elliott bring a wealth of knowledge, experience and skills as well as a balanced range of backgrounds and per perceptives. Once appointed, the independent remuneration panel will be able to proceed with carrying out a review of members' allowances during the period of March and April 2021, with a view of reporting to full council with recommendations in May 2020. I invite members to join me in endorsing these three excellent candidates for appointment and in thanking the monitoring officer for her work.
Thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Dixon. Is that seconded? Seconded. Thank you. Are there any questions or does any member wish to speak to the report? Councillor Francis, did you wish to speak to the report? Uh, yes, please, Madam Deputy Mayor. Um, all it was, um, it's just a quick question, really. Uh, reading, the, reading the papers, uh, if we're required under the Local Authority Regulations 2003 to discuss this item prior to uh, obviously making the annual scheme for members' allowances and expenses, I'm just wondering why this, why this hasn't already been tabled for the January or February meetings or why it, why it didn't go on. I know there's originally proposed a meeting for, for April the 8th, which, which hasn't gone ahead, but instead we've got this extraordinary meeting called with less than 24 hours notice given. And that just seems like like very poor planning for something that, that was predictable. And I'm wondering why we find ourselves in that seemingly avoidable situation. Can I just say that the mayor did ask for the um, extraordinary meeting to be uh, called on Friday. It's unfortunate that uh, we didn't get to know about it until much later, but it was uh, asked for on Friday uh, after, uh, following the, uh, the Standards Committee meeting. I, I understand that, but this, this particular item that we're talking about now needs to, needs to be agreed before the end of April. So I'm wondering why it's come to an extraordinary meeting rather than just being programmed into a, a scheduled meeting. Madam, Dixon, do you want to yeah, to Madam that? Deputy Mayor, obviously the meeting um, for April, um, Councillor Francis, will not be happening due to PERDA. So consequently, the report wasn't ready for the January meeting, which would have meant the next meeting would have been the annual February. meeting. So that, that's why Councillor Francis... Well. Pardon? So we, we had a meeting in January. We had a meeting in February. Um, understand about the restricted pe period and PERDA, but uh, would, would this have come under the restrictions? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't quite, you, you went on mute just towards the end there, Councillor Francis, I didn't quite catch the end I, I, of your question. I'm just wondering if, if, if this, is a, this is an agenda item that wouldn't have been able to be discussed because of PERDA. I know that sometimes full council meetings do happen during that restricted period. Well, we, we aren't holding a meeting in April due to PERDA because it is in the PERDA period from the 26th of March, which you are aware of. This report was not prepared in January or February. It could have come to the May meeting, which then would have been appointing the um, remuneration panel appointments and then having to discuss and debate the agenda item. So yes. that's the only well, reason. We, it... we knew that the local elections were going to happen in May uh, a very long time ago. We, we knew that certainly surely long enough in advance that, that this could have been just done at a regular meeting rather than needing an extraordinary meeting. This has just come on the agenda. This hasn't been prepared for to come onto the extraordinary meeting, Councillor Francis. This is just an additional agenda item to come I, to this meeting. I understand that, but if it has to happen, if it has to happen before a certain time, I'm wondering why it hasn't happened already and why it's been spotted into this meeting. Yeah, well, your comments actually noticed, Councillor Francis. Um, you know, it's brought to this meeting so you can ratify the positions so that, as it's already mentioned in the report, you know, they will look at um, during the month of March and April relevant information that they need to deliver at annual council in May. Councillor Francis. Thank you, Councillor yeah. Dixon. I have Councillor Hamilton, then Councillor Roberts. Councillor Hamilton? You're on mute, Councillor Hamilton. Thank you. Um, Madam Deputy Mayor, couldn't remember your title there for a second. <laughs> a long, long one. <laughs> yes. Um, as I'm sure you're aware, I'll have gone through this report with a fine-tooth comb, as I do with most things. Um, and I've just got a question, and it's under the person circumstances, which is on, and I think it'll be the officer that will need to answer this, which is on page 17. And I think it's the one, two, three, four, fifth one down. It says, you must have no personal, legal or contractual relationship with South Tyneside Council its members or co-opted members or employees. One of the people recommended um, has registered as their correspondence address on Companies House, um, South Tyneside Council, Town Hall and Civic Officers, Westall Road, South Shields, Tyne and Weir, United Kingdom, NE332 RL. So I was just wondering if that person actually does have a relationship with the council and if not 
why they're using the council's address as their registered correspondence address um, with Company's House, because it just seems very strange to me. Mr Romney, are you going to answer that one? Madam Deputy Bear, I'm not aware of the answer. I wonder if one of the other officers may be able to assist. Sorry, I couldn't hear um, John at all there. Mr Romney is not aware of the answer or any of the other officers who are present able to answer that question? There isn't any explanation that I can give at this meeting, Madam Mayor, um, but I will pick this up outside the meeting to find out. There is no understanding that I can think of as to why an individual be, would be registered at Company's House with the address of the Town Hall, and certainly the answers that they've provided during the process would suggest that they are absolutely able to, to be able to, to, to fulfil this role. I can give a little bit more information if that would help. It's the registration is they are a director of the Association of Accountant Technicians, um, which is on company's house with the registration of um, the town hall and civic officers. So I just wonder if we could find ourselves in legal trouble. I don't know the answer, by the way. I'm just, I don't want to get myself into legal jeopardy, which I'm sure you'll understand if we're appointing somebody who does have that relationship. Madam May, I'm comfortable that that's a historic entry, I think, and, and should be removed. I'll pick that up with the individual concerned, but I have gone through all of the criteria with the individuals, and I'm comfortable that they are all eligible to fulfil this role. Okay, thank you, Ms. Robertson. Uh, Councillor Roberts, do you wish to speak? Yes, Mayor. Deputy Mayor, thank you. Um, could I just ask who... Ask the mayor for have this extra meeting, please. Who asked the mayor? Who asked the mayor to have this extra meeting? As deputy mayor, ask, I asked the mayor if we could have a, a special meeting to consider the um, the agenda items. Well, have you not got an interest in that? As, as deputy mayor, I chair the meet, may, uh, meetings when the uh, when the mayor is not here. So I, I, I'm I'm well, unable well, to call a meeting. Not... So the deputy mayor, so the mayor has to call the meeting. So could I ask why the mayor is not here? Because he's, 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 he's shielding, yeah. He's, he's, he's had, shielded for a while, but he's been, he's been up there with yeah. coughing when that's on Zoom. He's, um, he's able to uh, lift, be lifted from his shielding on the 1st of April. He rang me today to say that he'd be lifted from his shielding on the 1st of April. He has had a letter. So then uh, he won't be able to attend, being, attend meetings. What about the cough meetings he's been attending? He attends those um, on Zoom. Unfortunately, no, when we... Okay, I'll explain it. When we have the meetings of the full council... The, uh, the mayor does them from the town hall because we need to do a big screen. We can't do it from an iPad because of the number of people we have um, at the meeting. So I can see now, one, two, three, four, five, 25 people on one screen, and then I can scroll across the next screen on this large thing. So I am actually in the town hall conducting this meeting. So could we not, not take a big screen for the, the, the mayor for his house? If he's mayor of this, this borough, surely he should have something like that in his own house if he's got a shield. No, we have to, we have to use a secure council um, uh, website and, uh, for a council meeting. And that's, that's why I'm conducting the meetings and not the mayor, because he has been shielding and he will be free from shielding on the 1st of April. I can assure you of that. OK. Any excuse at all, haven't you? Are there any other questions? Yes, please. Sorry, who was that? Councillor Robertson. Okay, Councillor Robertson. Thank you. Uh, Madam Mayor, the question that uh, Councillor Francis asked was, is, is it true once or not that the council wanted to get the sanctions done towards me before the election, before Perda? Is that not the reason for this meeting? Well, that had to be done at the council meeting anyway, so um, it, it's, it's, it's done on the back of this uh, item that we have here. Because yeah, I get, that. I, I get that, but as we were saying before to Councillor Francis, and the leader said to Councillor Francis, there wouldn't be a council meeting. So to get me for the sanctions, he has brought the for meeting forward because it's 12 years since this council's had an extraordinary meeting. The last extraordinary meeting that was called was for a vote of no confidence against Ian Malcolm. This is a unique situation that he's have done this to simply hit me with the sanctions and try and humiliate me before Perda. Is that not correct? What? I'm sorry, that's not correct. We already we had it. We asked for a special meeting to be called, and therefore there was business to be conducted at that meeting, and we, we put the extra item onto that uh, onto this agenda. So how how come this first item is that urgent, Madam Mayor? 
because you know we have, we have a statutory obligation to, uh, for instance, two thousand and one, to have a team in place to look at the council's allowances. When it comes to councillors' allowances, we don't need to accept those uh, recommendations, but they will probably be, the recommendations will probably brought, be brought to us at the annual meeting in May. Right, well, so, I just think it's got almost thrown the book at us. Okay. If it's that important, what was discussed before? Sorry. Let me may. N Nicola, that, um, sorry, uh, Ms. Robertson, um, did you wish to, uh, to answer that? just add some extra information to the fact that the process has taken longer than what I would have hoped and um, that's that's on my responsibility so it means that the report hasn't been able to go at the earlier meeting in February which would have been ideal but in order to be able to have the new independent remuneration committee consider the new allowances scheme and readiness for the annual meeting in May they need to be appointed beforehand otherwise we would be having the appointment of the panel plus the recommendations in the same meeting, which wouldn't be appropriate, yeah. which is why we need to have the appointment done now. Okay, thank you, Mr. Yes, can I respond to that, Madam Mayor? Councillor Milburn, do you wish to speak? Just for point of clarification, okay, Madam Mayor, sorry. Uh, did we say the report from the remuneration panel wasn't ready for January meeting or February's meeting? Because we said January, and now we're saying February. Can we just uh, clear that up, please? Yes, yeah, that's my error, um, Councillor Milburn, it's, it's Tracy. You know, there was this, obviously the meeting in February, the report wasn't ready. And I think Nicholas touched upon the had to refresh the panel and the process has taken a little bit longer, Councillor Milburn. So it wasn't prepared and ready to come, Councillor Milburn. Okay. Councillor Robertson, did you wish to speak again? Yeah, just in, in response to the uh, monitoring officer. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, could I ask the monitoring officer why the same urgency has not been given to the criminal offences committed by Ed Malcolm? The investigation has gone on nine months now, and there's no inclination that he's going before the Standards Committee. I'm Yet sorry, that's that's not for this meeting to be discussed. Madam Mayor, I'm speaking to the Monitoring Officer, if you don't mind. I'm chairing this meeting, Councillor Robertson, and I'm saying yeah, that we are not discussing that item at this yeah, meeting. Yeah, you're not allowing us to ask the Monitoring Officer a question. Nicola, do you wish to, do you wish to answer that question? It's not appropriate for this meeting, Chair. Okay, thank you. No, it wouldn't be, thank would you. it? Okay, right. Okay. Yet again, getting rotten cotton wool Labour Council. Is the motion agreed that we accept these uh, people for. Uh, sorry. Councillor Francis, did you wish to ask another question? Yes, sorry. It was just, it was specifically a question for the monitoring officer, just in response to in response to her response, if that makes sense. I, I totally appreciate that. And it, I realise that workloads have been ex exceedingly high in, in recent months, and, and that, that, that all makes sense if the intention was to get this item ready for February. Um, but are you able to clarify, would it have been possible to have this have a meeting and have that item discussed during April, during PERDA? It isn't a meeting in April on the council no. scheduled meetings? I, so I understand no, that no, there was originally it. proposed to be one. The question I'm asking is, if that meeting had gone ahead, would it have been possible to discuss this agenda item at that meeting? Yes, it would have been, but there isn't a meeting that it was able to be discussed in. So there was it's never an actual deal. meeting <coughs> on the schedule well, for April. Fine. There was there was a suggestion right at the beginning of the municipal year that there could be a meeting um, <coughs> at that time, but it, it was never actually ratified as being on the schedule. So it was never a, a meeting that I could work towards to, to bring the paper. Yeah, okay. okay. Thank you, well, everybody. Madam Mayor, please. Councillor Robertson, mm. I hope this no. is a pertinent question. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is. No. Uh, is Councillor Walsh going to mute himself? He's making silly noises there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, do you have a question? Yes. Uh, down the lines of where you're just about to take a vote there, uh, you seem to be overriding what Angela Hampton has brought to your attention. I, I, I surely would have thought that that link that she's demonstrated should stop you having this vote tonight? Well, Miss Robertson has already said that uh, all of the um, requirements have been uh, met and that she's going to check that. And she said that that address was probably historical. Well, with respect, Madam Mayor, Miss Robertson has just answered off the cuff and the link there clearly says the council has the address. And I think it's dangerous to go ahead and take this vote Miss Robertson doesn't know the answer. 
Ms. Robertson. Madam Mayor, I, I do know the answer. The lady in question used to be an employee of the council me, many years ago. I think that was a historical um, item on the company's house. I've been through with her, her credentials and I'm satisfied that she satisfies the, 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 the credentials for this role. So an independent person has got a link to the council? Not currently. Okay, thank you. Councillor Hamilton, did you wish to speak again? I was just going to say, I assume that if we did find there was a link afterwards, then the person could be removed from the panel at a later date. I'm sure that's true. I'm sure that's true. Yes, thank you very much. Are we agreed to accept these people as the um, independent? Agreed. 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 Can we take a name vote, please? Is there any dissent? Presumably there is a dissent, is there? You wish to take a name vote? Okay, we can do a name vote. Okay, can I ask Mr. Romney to take a name vote, please? Thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor. Uh, if councillors could indicate whether they are for or against the appointment um, when I call their name. Councillor Amar? For. Councillor Anglin? Councillor Anglin? Oh, sorry, for. Thank you. Councillor Atkinson? For. Councillor Bell? For. Councillor Brady? Four. Councillor Carter. Four. Councillor Dean. Four. Councillor Dix. Councillor Dix. Four. Yes, thank you. Councillor Dixon. Four. Four. Councillor Donaldson. Four. Councillor Ellison. Four. Councillor Flynn. Four. Councillor Foreman. Four. Councillor Francis. Four. Councillor Gibson. Four. Councillor Hamilton. Four. Councillor Hay. Four. Councillor Hetherington. Four. Councillor Hobson. Four. Councillor Kilgour. Four. Councillor Lee. Four. Four. Thank you. Councillor N. Maxwell. Four. Councillor N.E. Maxwell. Four. Councillor McCabe. Four. Councillor J. Milburn. Four. Councillor P. Milburn. Four. Councillor Peacock. Four. Councillor Porthouse. Four. Councillor Purvis. Four. Councillor Roberts. Abstained. Councillor Robertson. Conflict of interest. Sorry, abstain. Thank you. Councillor Smith. Four. Councillor Strike. Four. Councillor Taylor. Four. Councillor Thompson. Four. Councillor Trainer. Four. Councillor A. Walsh. Four. Councillor M. Walsh. Four. And Councillor Welsh. Four. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, there are 37 votes for the appointments and two abstentions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Romney. The next business is to consider a report of the acting head of legal services, which provides an update of the standards committee held on the 19th of March. Before this item is presented, as I previously mentioned, under declarations of interest, I have declared an interest in this item, so we'll leave the meeting during the discussions of this item. Can I point out that councillors who declared an interest should now leave the meeting to allow for this item to be considered? And given that this is the final item on the agenda, the councillors will not return to this meeting. As the mayor is absent and I'm the deputy mayor, can I ask for a nomination for Che to take over in, instead of me? I'd like John, to nominate John, John McCabe, McCabe, please. John, John McCabe has been moved. Is that seconded? Keith Roberts. Second, seconded, Councillor Atkinson. So we've had Councillor McCabe moved and we've had Councillor Roberts, did you say? Roberts. Yes. Roberts. Cool. 
Councillor Robertson, you have to leave the meeting. You've no, Robert, Robert, Lady Mayor. But as you, you, you're supposed to leave the meeting now, you can't nominate someone. Oh, well, I'm still here. Well, you, you shouldn't be. Goodbye. Goodbye. So we've had Councillor McCabe moved. Are there any other nominations? Thank you very much. I will now leave this meeting. Bye. Chair, uh, I think everybody who needs to leave the meeting has left. Thanks for that, Paul. Thank you, Madam Mayor, Deputy Mayor. Can I ask all councillors who have declared an interest in this item to please leave the meeting if they had not already done so? Could I ask Strategy and Democracy if they have... Uh, can they inform me if that's correct, that everybody who has declared an interest in this has left? Yes, Chad, the, the, oh, everybody who needs to leave has left. Okay, Paul, thanks for that. The next report is from the uh, Head of uh, Legal Services, John Rumney. Could I ask Mr. Rumney to present this report, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, the purpose of this report is firstly to inform Council of the decisions made by its Standards Committee at a hearing which took place last Friday, and secondly to put to Council a number of recommendations which the Committee made. On the 19th of March, Standards Committee considered a report... Read you on the spot to hear your mind. Sorry, I'll hold my microphone a bit closer. Sorry, Councillor. On the 19th of March, Standards Committee considered a report uh, prepared by the Council's monitoring officer, which set out her findings in respect of a complaint received by the Council in July 2020 concerning the conduct of Councillor Robertson, in particular the content of emails and Facebook posts which he had published. The complaint, which was submitted by Mr. Matt Brown, who is the Executive Director of Operations for NHS South Tyneside Clinical Commissioning Group, was that over a period of months, Councillor Robertson had sent emails to him and published Facebook posts about him, which breached the Member's Code of Conduct. The complaint was that the communication demonstrated a failure to treat the complainant with respect, they amounted to bullying of him and that they brought both the council and councillor robertson's office as councillor into disrepute chair can I, sorry john can i just the point of order please chair mr mccabe councillor mccabe councillor mccabe chair whatever you want to call councillor roberts um, um what's the McCabe. point what is your point of order the point of order is uh, councillor mccabe has um, uh, Councillor Hobson actually left that room that you've just sat with? Councillor Hobson has left, yes. We don't know that for definitely, John Dewar. Can you turn your mic yeah, Come around so we can have a look. Well, I don't know how, did, how I would do that, but, uh, you know, I, I take, take it personally that you don't agree that I'm verifying it as the chair of this committee that that person has left. Um, I would not break the rules of anything. I'm not saying you would, John. Would do I'm, going to assure you, I'm going to assure you that Gladys Hobson, councillor, has left this room. Right, OK, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Mr Romney, can you continue with your report, please? Thank you, Chair. Uh, councillor Robertson did not dispute sending the emails or publishing the Facebook posts. He accepted that the emails were sent to him were sent by him when he was acting in his official capacity as a councillor, but argued that the Facebook posts were published when he was acting in his personal capacity only. As set out in paragraph five of the report, the committee found by a majority of four to one that due to the emails appearing on Facebook interspersed with posts concerning the same issue, that Councillor Robertson was acting in his official capacity at all material times and that therefore the code of conduct was engaged in relation to all of the conduct complained of. The committee upheld the findings that Councillor Robertson had breached general codes one, two and four, 
by virtue of the content of the communications, as well as by permitting other comments to remain on the Facebook accounts that he used. The committee considered that an appropriate uh, and proportionate response to the findings would be firstly the issuing of a formal censure of Councillor Robertson in respect of his breaches of the code, and secondly, the reporting of its decision to full council. In addition, the committee also made the following recommendation, recommendations to council as part of what it considered to be an appropriate response. The first recommendation is that council itself issues a formal censure of Councillor Robertson in respect of the breaches he's found to have been committed. The next one is that Councillor Robertson's access to council facilities be restricted in that all email communications sent by him to elected members and council officers, either from his council email address or any personal address, be diverted into a single email inbox to be monitored on a daily basis on weekdays by officers and for such communications to be forwarded to the appropriate individual or service for consideration and if appropriate action as soon as practicable. In addition, emails sent from Councillor Robertson's council email address to email addresses of the clinical commissioning group be barred. The committee recommended that if accepted by council, the above restrictions should take effect immediately into a run for a period of six calendar months, that is, if accepted today until the 22nd of September. The committee also recommended that council consider induction material and election member training more generally and ensure improvements are made where necessary to rectify any deficiencies or perceived deficiencies in readiness for the local elections in May. It is those recommendations which Council has asked to consider. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Rumney. Thank you for that. Council has recommended to implement the sanctions outlined in paragraph 8C and 8D of the report in the manner and for the duration specified by the Standards Committee and to request and authorise officers to consider induction material and elected member training so as to ensure improvements are made where necessary to rectify any deficiencies or perceived deficiencies in ready readiness for the local elections in May 2021. Are there any questions or does any member wish to speak to the report? Councillor Roberts. I mean, Councillor McCabe. First thing, John, um, Councillor McCabe, I think the emails, if he's done emails to an outside body, why should his emails be blocked to the council? He's never disrespected anybody in the council. He has called Matt Brown a liar. Matt Brown did lie to the committee that you were on as well. So we know he's a liar. So I can't understand why they want to take his emails away from the council. That's my first point, mate. My second point is I can't understand why they're pushing and railroading this uh, John Robertson through the committees, through the standards committee when we've got Ed Malcolm, who is a fraudster and a thief, and it's been put out there, and that's getting brushed under the carpet by the monitor officer, which is a disgrace, man, because they're trying to gag John Robertson, and it's making the council look like a laughingstock. The second, the third one, John, is that you brought this through on the 19th. Why wasn't the 18th one brought through when it was playing blackmail, threatening intimidation by Councillor Peacock towards the CA? That's gone quiet. And also Councillor Hobson, she's sitting there and she's got it and Councillor Atkinson have both done things themselves. Councillor Hobson's on that uh, committee and calling people for bullying and yet it's still on her council file, a Labour council file for her bullying uh, um, a disabled gentleman in a, a meeting. And Councillor Atkinson and Councillor Hobson were there totally talking about stuff and they've already condemned Councillor Robertson even before the went for meeting. So that meeting should not be held. I'd just like to know if Councillor Atkinson, or is Ian Malcolm still there, dressed up as a woman, and calling himself Atkinson now, please? Thank you, that's my lot, mate. Well, thanks for the several questions and comments there. Um, could I ask Mr Rumney to just give a quick reply on the, uh, the formalities and the uh, jurisdiction, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, I think I've got all of the points made. Um, 
it's my understanding that the decision of standards committee to block uh, well, not block, but divert council um, uh, emails to council officers and members uh, was because of a finding that um, in circulating emails to a wide audience, um, Councillor Robertson was using that uh, with the aim of intimidating and, and harassing the individual to whom the email was originally sent. In relation to other code of conduct complaints, until they reach the um, stage of standards committee, then they are confidential and it's not appropriate or possible to provide any information about them. In relation to the standards hearing that took place on the 18th, standards committee um, took the decision that there was no need to refer their findings to full council. And I think that was on the basis of the response to that complaint by the subject member in those circumstances. Um, I'm not aware of any uh, information relating to Councillor Hobson and I'm not aware of, uh, of any information relating to the point Councillor Roberts made uh, about Councillor Atkinson. Um, I'm not sure if he wants to clarify that. So are you saying you've never heard the tape records them discussing it in the Labour, uh, the Labour meeting before, the, uh, before they had the hearing? Is that what you're saying John? No Councillor Roberts I, I haven't heard it. I saw the transcript that was part of the evidence at the hearing. So you've heard it, but you're still taking ah. that. Do you not think that these councillors should have stepped aside once they're discussing stuff before it's actually come to count the, the committee? The issue of declarations of interest and conflicts of interest was addressed in detail at the standards hearing. So even though this was brought up about these two councillors talking about it and what to condemn beforehand, that's quite they're quite happy with that going ahead, are you? Well, the evidence wasn't quite that, Councillor Roberts. The evidence was there for you plain to hear. We will chuck the book at him at the next one. That's not the complete record of the evidence, Councillor Roberts, it but was it was there, discussed, we it was discussed in detail at the Standards Committee hearing. It was said there, and it, we'll, we'll bring it out to you and show you that it was said. We will chuck the book at him at the next one. So okay. that was two councillors discussing it and making their mind up even before you went in front of the committee. Get, and that got, democracy got, for you. That's democracy oh. and transparency, is it? Two more uh, questions. Oh, question Councillor yeah. Hamilton, you have a question? I do, yes. Um, I wasn't able to watch the Standards Committee on, on Friday, so I took this afternoon off work to read through all the papers. And I have to say, I was quite shocked at some of the, the language and um, the, the, the things that I saw. Um, so... I, I would not under any circumstances condone that type of behaviour. Um, I think the abuse was horrendous. I'm going to say that now. Um, but I do have a question about the sanctions and it's a genuine question. And I, I, I want to give an example as to why I'm asking, which will explain why I'm asking the question better than if I did it myself, if that makes sense. Um, at the weekend, I was contacted by a councillor, another councillor colleague, I'm not going to say which one it was, but it wasn't Councillor Robertson, um, about uh, an issue that related to somebody who lived in South Shields. And it was somebody that they wanted to put in touch with the South Shields MP. That councillor sent me that person's email and telephone number. Now, if that councillor had not been allowed to send counsel um, an email directly to me and it had gone to an officer, by not having the permission to share that, th that individual's information with me, would they then be breaching the GDPR because they're sharing that information with somebody they're not allowed to share it with? And that for me is a genuine concern because uh, uh, me as a resident, if I was contacting my councillor, I'm not sure that I would be confident doing that if it was going to the inbox, an inbox that somebody that I don't know who they are could monitor, yep. because that could include personal and sensitive information about me. So I have some concerns. To be fair, I would have probably put in stricter sanctions. Um, you know, the, there's options to remove people from committees and things that I would have probably looked at. But I think remove, removing the email access to other councillors and the councillor, council officers could just present that 
that issue in relation to GDPR. And I do have some genuine concerns about that because, as I say, it was a case that came up at the weekend for me. And if that person had sent it to a, an email, that email to, with those contact details in, and it, I hadn't been the person that read it, now I have passed those contact details on to the MP because I was given permission to, but if I hadn't had, the, if I'm just really, I don't know if I'm making sense or not, but I, I am really genuinely concerned that by doing this, we could be putting ourselves at risk because it could be a GDPR issue and it could prevent that councillor from then doing the job that he was elected to do by not being able to, to send the information to me, for example. I hope that makes sense. Right. OK. And, and Ms Robertson, would you like to comment on that as a modern officer, please? Yes, of course. Um, the councillor still has use of his mobile telephone and could communicate by use of his mobile if it was um, to communicate contact details of a, of a resident or a constituent um, to, to ensure that there were no GDPR um, issues. This is simply, you know, his use of emails, which would then be filtered through, um, as I understand it, a, a single access, which would then be sort of filtered back out to the relevant person. Uh, but like I say, the use of the telephone is there if he needs to communicate more quickly. Thanks. Thank you very much for that. I just um, next question. <laughs> next question is from Councillor Paul Milburn. Thanks, Councillor. Um, yeah, I'd just like to cod codcur uh, Councillor Hampton's concerns, but probably for a different reason. Um, I think the email suppression sanctions, uh, they don't make any sense at all to me. Um, I think they're totally inappropriate. But why suppress the ability to contact officers and members when they've clearly have nothing to do with this case at all? This, this, this case, the complaint, was led by uh, a, a member of a public body, nothing to do with the elected member or council officer, so I don't see the relevance at all. Um, and on, on top of that, I think basically what you're doing is you, you, these sanctions that are actually suppressing the voice of the, the good people of uh, Felgate, Calf Close and, and, and Headworth, and I just don't think they're appropriate. Thank you. Okay, Paul, thanks for that, uh, your comments. Councillor Purvis? Councillor Purvis, you have a question? I don't have a question. I didn't put my hand up. Such a lovely woman. Okay. No more uh, comments or questions from, from everybody? Okay. Well, there's no more questions. Um, yeah. Chair. Yes, Councillor Roberts? Yes, Nicola Robeson, uh, the modern officer, didn't answer Councillor Hamilton's uh, question about the data protection in emails. Oh, she, did, yeah. she has given an answer. It wasn't which, clear. Well, I'm satisfied with it. So. Well, that's fair enough then. Okay. On that button, button over that, John. Sorry, Councillor McCabe, I, I do want clarity on the data protection because that was my main concern. It wasn't about how they can contact me it was about the data protection. That is my main concern. And I would like some clarity on that because I took legal advice this morning and I was told that I could be in trouble if that was the, the issue. And I'd also like to propose, therefore, that we take- Can, I, yeah, can I just check, back. Angela, can I just come in there? I'll get yeah. Mr. Rumney, our Head of Legal Services, to give an answer, a qualified answer on that. John Rumney, could you answer that question, please? Thank you, Chair. Uh, I would make um, two points. Uh, in relation to the concerns from Councillor Hamilton. Firstly, there is the uh, issue of implied consent. If someone contacts an elected member with a particular issue um, that they would like that uh, person uh, to resolve, then there is implied consent that the um, councillor can speak to officers uh, and anyone else who would um, reasonably be expected to be involved in resolving that problem. If in doubt, of course, members can seek express consent from anyone who approaches them. Which is uh, what I do. It, yes, I mean, there, there's implied consent, if in doubt, um, you, you can seek consent. But of course, on top of that, uh, aside from the um, restrictions on email communications, the emails will be um, diverted into a, a, 
a particular account and then from there transferred to the appropriate service to respond. Implied consent would cover that, in my opinion. Um, but of course, as um, uh, the monitoring officer advised, it, it is still open to members to pick up the phone and call each other if that um, would assist in resolving any of the problems. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to mute John. Okay. Um, is the motion agreed? Agreed. 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 I'm not, I'm not voting this. Not agreed. Not agreed. There's any dissenting voices? We're going to have a we're going to have a name vote if you wish, uh, Councillor yes. Roberts. Yes, please, a name vote, then we'll yeah, see which one. Councillor McCabe, oh, no. I did suggest that we take each of the sanctions separately, a vote on them, because no. I'm not comfortable with voting on no. one, one of them. Up to council, who's, obviously, but I'm not comfortable with voting on... In who's keeps saying no? On. Who's keeps saying no, Councillor McCabe? I no. don't know. I don't know who, who I can't hear that, uh, Councillor Roberts. Okay, we're, we're going to, the report is the report, and we will agree the report, or not agree the report, and each individual councillor can make their own mind up on that particular issue. That's my answer on this. So is it going to so, a name vote? Please? Going to go to a name vote. Could I call upon uh, John Rumney, Mr Rumney, to uh, carry out the vote, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll let you know I'm going to put you on mute so we don't have any feedback in this room while I do the vote. Councillor Amar. Agreed. Councillor Anglin. Agreed. Councillor Atkinson. Agreed. Councillor Bell. Agreed. Councillor Brady. I can see. So we can still mute. Back Councillor Brady, you just need to turn yourself, uh, turn your mute off. There we are. Is that better? That's it. Yeah, great. Thank you. Sorry Councillor Carter. Agreed. Councillor Dean. <laughs> Agreed. Councillor Dix. Agreed. Councillor Dixon. Agreed. Councillor Donaldson. Agreed. Councillor Ellison. Agreed. Councillor Smith. <laughs> Agreed. Councillor Foreman. Agreed. Councillor Francis. If there's no option to take it in parts, then agreed. Councillor Gibson. Agreed. Councillor Hamilton. I'm going to abstain on the grounds that I can't put myself in legal jeopardy. Councillor Hay. Agreed. Councillor Kilgower. Agreed. Councillor Leesk. Agreed. <coughs> Councillor N. Maxwell. Agreed. Councillor N. E. Maxwell. Agreed. Councillor McCabe. Agreed. Councillor J. Milburn. Agreed. Councillor P. Milburn. Inappropriate. Disagree. Against. Thank you. Councillor Peacock. Agreed. Councillor Porthouse. Agreed. Councillor Purvis. Agreed. Councillor Roberts. Disagreeing, and everybody, you should hang your head in shame. That being good, you've all got something to hide. Everyone is. Thank you. Money going missing, everything. Is there a... Right. Councillor Strike. Agreed. Councillor Taylor. Agreed. Councillor Trainer. Agreed. Councillor A. Walsh. Huh? Agreed. Nice. Councillor M. Walsh. Agreed. And Councillor Welsh. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor McCabe, who's this host that keeps muting me when I'm talking? Dorian Pearl is a smile on my face, you horrible woman. Is have all got something to hide. All the money has been thieving for years is all coming to an end. Thank you, Chair. The results of the vote are 31 for one abstention and two against.
Thank you. Thanks for that, uh, Mr. Romney. Um, that concludes the business for today's meeting. The live streaming will now cease. So we're going to thank everybody for their attendance today. Uh, can I take this opportunity to, to wish you a safe journey home if you're not already there? And can I thank any members of the public and press who have been watching today? And that concludes the business today.